Daniel. Chapter 1 In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the vessels from the house of God, which he carried off to the land of Shinar. And he placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring in some of the sons of Israel, those of royal blood and of the nobility, young men without any defect and handsome in appearance, and gifted in all wisdom and possessing knowledge, and quick to understand and competent to serve in the king's palace. They were to be taught the language and literature of the Chaldeans, and the king allotted them a daily portion of the royal food and of the wine which he himself drank. And upon the completion of three years of training, they were to serve in the king's presence. Now those from among the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief eunuch gave them new names. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the royal portion of food nor with the wine which he drank. So he begged the chief eunuch to spare him this defilement. Though God had given Daniel the favor and sympathy of the chief eunuch, nevertheless, the chief eunuch said to Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king, who has allotted your food and drink. If he sees your faces looking worse than the young men of your age, then all of you would endanger my head before the king. Then Daniel said to Meltzar, whom the chief eunuch had put in charge of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please, test your servants for ten days, and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then, let our appearance and the appearance of the young men who eat the royal portion of food be compared by you, and treat your servants according to what you see. So he agreed to this request, and tested them, for ten days. And at the end of ten days, their appearance was healthier with fatter flesh than any of the young men who ate the royal portion of food. So Meltzar continued to take away their portion of food and the wine that they were to drink, and gave them vegetables. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and proficiency in all literature and wisdom. And to Daniel, he gave understanding of all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the time specified by the king for their preparation, the chief eunuch brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. When the king had spoken with all of them, none was found equal to Daniel, Hananiah, and Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they served before the king. And in any matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. Chapter 2 Now in the twelfth year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, 
Nebuchadnezzar had a dream which left his spirit so troubled that he could not sleep. So the king ordered that the magicians and enchanters and sorcerers and Chaldeans be summoned in order to tell the king what he had dreamed. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I have had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know what that dream means. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation. Then the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, This is what I have firmly decided. Unless you tell me the dream as well as its interpretation, you shall be cut to pieces, and your houses shall be made into refuse. But if you tell me the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. They answered once more, saying, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will give its interpretation. But the king answered and said, I know for certain that you are bargaining for time, because you see that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there is but one law for you. For all of you have conspired to speak false and corrupt words before me until the situation has changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, then I may be sure that you can also give me its correct interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can do what the king has asked. Never has any king, however great and mighty, asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. What you request, O king, is too difficult, and there is no one who can tell it to the king except the gods, and their dwelling is not among flesh. At this, the king became so furiously angry that he ordered all the wise men of Babel to be put to death. When the law was issued to put the wise men to death, they sought to put Daniel to death along with his companions. When Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, had set out to kill the wise men of Babel, Daniel answered by prudently taking counsel with him. He asked Arioch, the king's captain, saying, What is the reason for this harsh law from the king? So Arioch made the decision known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might give the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to his companions, Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah, that they might seek mercies from the God of the heavens concerning this mystery, so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babel. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision at night. Then Daniel blessed the God of the heavens and said, Blessed be the name of the great God from age to age, for wisdom and power are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things, and he knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. To you, to the God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise, because you have given me wisdom and power. And now, 
You have made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. So Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babel. He went and said to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babel. Bring me before the king, and I will tell the king its interpretation. Then Arioch quickly brought Daniel before the king, and said to him, I have found a man among the sons of the Judean exiles, who will make known the interpretation to the king. The king answered, and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Are you able to tell me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? In the king's presence, Daniel answered and said, The mystery which the king has demanded, the wise men, the enchanters, the magicians, and the astrologers cannot explain to the king. But there is a God in the heavens who reveals mysteries, and he is making known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the days to come. O king, may you live forever. Your dream and the visions passing through your head while you lay on your bed were as follows. O king, while you were lying on your bed, thoughts came to you about what should happen in the future, and he who reveals mysteries has made known to you what must happen. But as for me, this mystery has not been revealed to me because I have exceptionally more wisdom than anyone living, but in order that the interpretation may be made known to the king, and that you may know the thoughts in your heart. As you, O king, were watching, behold, there was a great image. This great image, whose appearance was excellent, stood before you, and its form was terrifying. This image's head was of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly clay. As you continued to watch, a stone was cut out without hands, and it struck the image's iron and clay feet and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together at once and became like chaff on the summer threshing floor, and the wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This was the dream. Now we will give its interpretation before the king. You, O king, are king of kings. For the God of the heavens has given you a kingdom, strength, and power, and glory. And wherever the sons of men dwell, or the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heavens, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. But after you, another kingdom shall arise, inferior to yours. Then a third kingdom shall arise, a bronze, which shall rule over the whole earth. And there shall be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, just as iron that breaks in pieces and shatters everything and like iron that crushes all the earth, it will break in pieces and crush everything. As for the feet and toes which you saw, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, so the kingdom shall be divided. Yet some of the iron's hardness shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. As for the toes of the feet being partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. And as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, so they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, the God of the heavens will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And this kingdom shall not be left to another people, Rather, it shall break in pieces and abolish all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. 
just as you saw that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to the king what must happen in the future. The dream is precise, and its interpretation is true. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and ordered that sacrifice and incense be offered to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is God of gods, and Lord of kings, and revealer of mysteries, since you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babel and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babel. And Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babel. But Daniel himself remained in the royal court. Chapter 3 In the eighteenth year, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, sixty cubits high and six cubits wide. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babel. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather together the satraps, the prefects and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the prefects and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, It is commanded to you, O peoples, nations, and languages, at the time when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery and bagpipe, and every kind of music. You shall fall down and worship the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down in worship at that very hour shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, and bagpipe, and all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Judeans. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, and bagpipe, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Judeans whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men have not paid due regard to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, nor worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage, and gave the command to fetch Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. 
Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, harp, lyre, the psaltery, and the bagpipe, and all kinds of music, fall down and worship the image which I have made. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast at that very hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, there is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and from your hand, O king, may he deliver us. But if not, let it be known unto you, O king, that we do not serve your God. Nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded some of the strongest men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace heated exceedingly, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And they walked around in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. And after Azariah stood, he prayed in this way. And he opened his mouth in the midst of the fire and said, Blessed are you and praiseworthy, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and glorious forever is your name. For you are righteous in all you have done, and all your deeds are faultless, and your ways right, and all your judgments are truth. You have executed proper judgments in all that you have brought upon us and upon Jerusalem, the holy city of our fathers. For by truth and judgment you have done all this because of our sins. For we have sinned and transgressed by departing from you, and we have done every kind of evil. We have not obeyed your commandments, nor have we done as you ordered us for our good. And all you have brought upon us, all you have done to us, you have done by a proper judgment. You have handed us over to our enemies, lawless, hateful rebels, to an unrighteous king, the worst in all the world. And now we cannot open our mouths. We, your servants who revere you, have become a shame and a reproach. For your name's sake, do not deliver us up forever or make void your covenant. Do not take away your mercy from us, for the sake of Abraham, your beloved, and your servant Isaac, and Israel, your holy one, to whom you promised to multiply their offspring like the stars of heaven and like the sand on the shore of the sea. For we are reduced, O Lord, beyond any other nation, brought low everywhere in the world this day because of our sins. We have in our day no prince, prophet, or leader, no holocaust, sacrifice, oblation, or incense, no place to offer first fruit to find favor with you. But with contrite heart and a spirit of humiliation let us be received, as though it were holocausts of rams and bullocks, and as though it were tens of thousands of fat lambs. So let our sacrifice be in your presence today, as we follow you unreservedly, for those who trust in you cannot be put to shame. And now we follow you with our whole heart, and we fear you, and we pray to you. Do not let us be put to shame, 
but deal with us in your kindness and in your great mercy. Deliver us by your wonders and bring glory to your name, O Lord. Let all those be routed who inflict evils on your servants. Let them be shamed and powerless, and their strength be broken. Let them know that you alone are the Lord God and glorious over the whole world. And the king's men who had thrown them in continued to stoke the furnace with brimstone and pitch and tow and faggots. And the flames rose forty-nine cubits above the furnace and spread out and burned the Chaldeans who were caught near the furnace. But a messenger of the Lord went down into the furnace with Azariah's party and drove the fiery flames out of the furnace and made the inside of the furnace as though a dew-laden wind was whistling through it. So the fire in no way touched them, and it did not cause them pain nor harm. Then these three, with one voice, were singing hymns and glorifying and blessing God in the furnace, saying, Blessed are you, O Lord God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious. Glorious forever. All you works of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise, Praise and exalt him above all forever. Angels of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. You heavens, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. All you waters above the heavens, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. All you hosts of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Sun and moon, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Stars of heaven, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Every shower and dew, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. All you spirits, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Fire and heat, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Chill and winter, cold, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Dew and falling snow, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Frost and chill, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Ice and snow, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Nights and days, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Light and darkness, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Lightnings and clouds, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Let the earth bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Mountains and hills bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Everything growing from the earth bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. You rainstorms and springs bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Seas and rivers bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. You great sea creatures, and all that move in the waters, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. All you birds of the heaven, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. All ye wild beasts and livestock, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. You sons of men, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O Israel, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. You priests, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Servants of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Spirits and souls of the righteous, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Holy men of humble art, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. 
For he has delivered us from the netherworld and saved us from the power of death. He has freed us from the midst of the raging flame and delivered us from the fire. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Bless the God of gods, all you who fear the Lord. Praise him and give him thanks, because his mercy endures forever. And hearing them singing praises and seeing them alive, King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. And he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said to his officials, Look, I see four men, unfettered, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the door of the burning, fiery furnace, and answered, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected and the smell of fire was not on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar answered, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver his servants who trusted in him. And they have disobeyed the king's word and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language would speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made into refuse, because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babel. Chapter 4 King Nebuchadnezzar, to all peoples, nations, and languages who dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. It seemed good to me to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has accomplished for me. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders! His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream and it terrified me, and the thoughts I had while lying on my bed and the visions that passed through my head troubled me. So I issued a decree for all the wise men of Babel to be brought before me in order that they might inform me of the dream's interpretation. Then the magicians, the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the astrologers came in, and I told them the dream, but none of them could inform me of its interpretation. But finally, Daniel came before me, whose name is Belteshazzar, after the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy God and I told the dream in his presence. Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you, and that no mystery is too difficult for you, explain to me the visions that I have seen in my dream, and tell its interpretation. These were the visions that passed through my head while I was lying on my bed. I was watching, and behold, there was a tree at the center of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew great, yes, strong, and its height reached to the heavens, and it could be seen as far as the ends of the whole earth. 
Its leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant, and on it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heavens nested in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. I continued watching in the visions that passed through my head while I was lying on my bed, and behold, there was a watcher, a holy one, descending from the heavens. He cried aloud and said the following, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches. Strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts flee from under it, and the birds from its branches. But leave its stump and roots in the earth, fettered with iron and bronze, in the tender grass of the field. And let it be bathed with the dew of the heavens, and let his lot be among the beasts, grazing on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of a man, and let him be given the heart of a beast, and let seven times pass over him. This decree has been decided by the watchers and the sentence by the word of the Holy Ones, in order that the living may know that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of men, and he gives it to whomever he chooses and sets it over the lowliest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belteshazzar, tell me its interpretation, since all the wise men of my kingdom are unable to inform me of the interpretation. But you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for about one hour and his thoughts troubled him. The king spoke and said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, if only the dream concerned those who hate you and its interpretation concerned your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew great and strong, and whose height reached to the heavens, and which could be seen by the whole earth, and whose leaves were beautiful, and its fruit abundant, and had food on it for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and in whose branches the birds of the heavens made their nest. It is you, O king, who have grown great and strong, for your greatness has grown, and reaches to the heavens, and your dominion as far as the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from the heavens and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, fettered with iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be bathed with the dew of the heavens, and let his lot be among the beasts of the field until seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the Most High's decree which has come upon my lord the king. And they shall drive you from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make you eat grass like oxen, and they shall bathe you with the dew of the heavens. And seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he chooses. And regarding the command they gave to leave the stump and the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be preserved for you once you have acknowledged that it is the heavens that rule. Therefore, O king, accept my advice to you and atone for your sins with alms and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor so that perhaps your prosperity will be lengthened. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the twelve months, as he was walking on the roof of the royal palace in Babel, the king spoke, saying, Is not this the great Babel, which I have built as a royal house by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? 
while the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from the heavens. This is what they are saying to you, King Nebuchadnezzar. The kingdom has departed from you, and they shall drive you from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until you acknowledge that the Most High rules over the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he chooses. At that very moment, the word was fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from among men, and ate grass like oxen. And his body was bathed with the dew of the heavens, until his hair had grown like the wings of eagles, and his nails like the claws of birds. And at the end of those days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes to the heavens, and my reason was restored to me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored Him who lives forever. For His dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom endures from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, and He does as He pleases among the forces of the heavens, as well as among the inhabitants of the earth. There is no one who can restrain his hand or say to him, What have you done? At the same time, my reason was restored to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me, and my counselors and nobles sought me, and I was restored to my kingdom, and much greater majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and glorify the King of the heavens, because all his works are truth and his ways just, and he is able to bring low those who walk in pride. Chapter 5 King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. While he was tasting the wine, Belshazzar commanded that the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem be brought in so that the king, along with his nobles, his wives, and his concubines, might drink from them. Then, they brought in the gold and silver vessels which had been taken from the temple of the house of God in Jerusalem. And the king, along with his nobles, his wives, and his concubines, drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of bronze, of iron, of wood, and of stone. At that very moment, opposite the lampstand, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And when the king saw the hand's wrist as it wrote, the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him, so that his hip joints were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. The king cried aloud to bring in the enchanters, the magicians, the Chaldeans, and the astrologers. The king spoke, saying to the wise men of Babel, Whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and a chain of gold around his neck, and he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came, but they were unable to read the writing or make its interpretation known to the king. 
Then, King Belshazzar was greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed, and his nobles were thrown into confusion. When the queen heard about the discussion between the king and his nobles, she entered the banquet hall. The queen answered, saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance be changed. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And during the days of your father, he was found to have brilliance and knowledge and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods. In fact, your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, your father the king, made him chief of the magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, and astrologers. He did this because this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar, possessed an extraordinary spirit, along with knowledge, understanding, and the ability to interpret dreams and to explain enigmas and to solve problems. Now therefore summon Daniel, and he will read the writing and will give the interpretation. Then Daniel was brought into the king's presence. The king answered and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel, who is one of the sons of the Judean exiles, whom my father, the king, brought from Judah? I have heard of you, that the Spirit of God is in you, and that brilliance and understanding and extraordinary wisdom are found in you. And now the wise men, the enchanters, have been brought in before me in order to read this writing and tell me its interpretation. But they could not provide its interpretation. But I, I have heard of you, that you can interpret dreams and explain enigmas. Now, look, if you are able to read the writing and make its interpretation known to me, you shall be clothed with purple and a chain of gold around your neck and you shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said in the king's presence, Keep your gifts for yourself and give your reward to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make the interpretation known to him. O king, the Most High God gave your father, Nebuchadnezzar, a kingdom and greatness, as well as glory and majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed, but whomever he wished, he kept alive, and whomever he wished, he exalted, but whomever he wished, he humbled. But when his heart was lifted up, and his spirit was hardened by insolence, he was deposed from his royal throne, and they stripped his glory from him. Then he was driven from among the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was bathed with the dew of the heavens, until he acknowledged that the Most High God rules over the kingdom of men, and sets over it whomever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of the heavens. And they have brought the vessels of his house before you. And you and your nobles, your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them. 
and you have praised the gods of silver and of gold, of bronze, of iron, of wood, and of stone, which do not see, nor hear, nor understand. But you have not glorified the God in whose hand is your spirit and all your ways. Therefore the hand's wrist was sent from his presence, and this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mini, Mini, Tekel, and Uparzin. This is its interpretation. Mini, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, it has been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple and a chain of gold around his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom at the age of 62. Chapter 6 It pleased Darius to appoint over the kingdom a hundred and twenty satraps, to be throughout the whole kingdom. And in order that the king might not suffer any loss, these satraps were made accountable to three supervisors, one of whom was Daniel. Because he had an extraordinary spirit in him, this Daniel outshone the rest of the supervisors and satraps. So the king decided to set him over the whole kingdom. Therefore, the supervisors and satraps sought to find grounds for an accusation against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no grounds for an accusation or corruption in him because he was trustworthy. Nor was there any error or corruption to be found in him. Then these men said, We shall not find any grounds for accusation against this Daniel unless we find it against him by way of the law of his God. So these supervisors and satraps assembled before the king and said to him, King Darius live forever. All the supervisors of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors have consulted together that the following prohibition ought to be established and enforced by a royal decree, that for thirty days all men who petition any god or man except you, O king, shall be cast into the lion's den. Now, O king, establish the prohibition and sign the document, so that it will be immutable and irrevocable under the law of the Medes and Persians. Therefore, King Darius signed the written prohibition. Even after Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he continued his custom of going up to his house, where, in his upper chamber with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and petitioning before his God. Then they went before the king 
and spoke concerning the king's prohibition. O king, did you not sign the prohibition that for thirty days all men who petition any god or man except for you, O king, shall be cast into the lion's den? The king answered and said, The thing is true, irrevocable under the law of the Medes and Persians. So they answered and said in the king's presence, Daniel, who is one of the sons of the Judean exiles, does not show due regard for you, O king, nor for your sign prohibition, but makes his petition three times a day. And when the king heard these words, he greatly grieved over him, and set his heart on Daniel to rescue him. So he worked until sundown to rescue him. Then these men assembled near the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no prohibition or decree which the king establishes may be revoked. So the king gave the command. Then they brought Daniel and cast him into the lion's den. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Then a stone was brought and laid in the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his nobles, so that the purpose concerning Daniel might remain irrevocable. Now the king returned to the palace where he spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him, and he was unable to sleep. Then early in the morning, at first light, the king went in haste to the lion's den. And when he drew near to the den, he cried out to Daniel with a sorrowful voice, the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Then Daniel said, O king, live forever. My God has sent his messenger and shut the lions' mouths, so that they have not injured me, because I was found innocent before him. And neither have I committed any crime before you, O king. Then the king was exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no injury was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. Then the king gave the command, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the lion's den, them, their children, and their wives. And before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Then King Darius wrote to all peoples, nations, and languages, wherever they dwelt in the whole earth. May you have abundant peace. I make a decree throughout every dominion of my kingdom that everyone must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is a living God and enduring throughout the ages, and his kingdom shall never be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. He is a deliverer and savior, and a worker of signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. 
So this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and during the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Chapter 7 In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babel, Daniel had a dream, and visions passed through his head while he lay on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, was watching in my vision during the night. And behold, the four winds of the heavens were stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion, and it had an eagle's wings. I watched until its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, there was another beast, a second one like a bear, and it was raised up on one side, and there were three tusks in its mouth, between its teeth. And this is what they said to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this, as I was watching, behold, there was another, like a leopard, and on its back were four wings of a bird. And the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, as I was watching in the night visions, behold, there was a fourth beast, terrible and horrible and exceedingly strong. And it had huge iron teeth with which it was devouring. Yes, breaking in pieces. And it trampled the residue with its feet. And it was different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. While I was considering the horns, behold, another horn, a little one, came up among them and three of the previous horns were uprooted from before it. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking arrogant words. I continued to watch until thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His garment was white as snow, and his hair on his head was like pure wool. His throne was flames of fire, its wheels of burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands were ministering to him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated for judgment, and the books were opened. At that time, I was watching because of the sound of the arrogant words which the horn was speaking. I watched until the beast was slain and its body was destroyed 
and thrown into the burning flame. And as for the rest of the beasts, their dominion had been taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a time and a season. As I was watching in the night visions, behold, there was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of the heavens. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and they presented him before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, and all peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, found my spirit anguished within its sheath and the visions passing through my head alarm me. I approached one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made the interpretation of these things known to me. Those four great beasts are four kings. They shall arise upon the earth but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom, and they shall possess the kingdom to the age, even to the age of the ages. Then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly terrible, devouring and breaking in pieces with its iron teeth and bronze claws, and trampling the residue with its feet, and about the ten horns on its head, and about the other horn which came up, before which three fell, namely, that horn which had eyes, and a mouth which spoke arrogant words, whose appearance was greater than its fellows. As I watched, this horn was making war against the Holy Ones, and it was prevailing against them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was pronounced in favor of the Holy Ones of the Most High, and the time came for the Holy Ones to take possession of the kingdom. This is what he said. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom on the earth, which is different from all kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns are ten kings arising from this kingdom, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be different from the previous ones and he shall put down three kings. And as an adversary, he shall speak words against the Most High, and he shall oppress the Holy Ones of the Most High, and he shall intend to change seasons and a law. Then they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. But the court shall be seated for judgment and they shall take away his dominion, to consume and destroy it with finality. Then the kingdom and the dominion, even the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heavens, shall be given to the people, the holy ones of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is the end of the account. I, Daniel, was greatly alarmed by my thoughts, 
and my countenance changed, but I kept the account in my heart. Chapter 8 After this first vision, which had appeared to me, I, Daniel, saw a vision in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar. And I saw a vision. And when I saw this vision, I was in the citadel of Susa, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw the vision when I was by the Ulai River. Then I lifted my eyes and saw, and behold, standing beside the river was a large ram which had horns, horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram goring westward and eastward, northward and southward, so that none of all the beasts were able to withstand him, nor were there any that could rescue from his hand. But he did as he pleased and became magnificent. And as I was considering, behold, a male goat came from the west to the surface of the whole earth and it did not touch the ground. And the goat had one horn between his eyes. Then he approached the two-horned ram, which I had seen standing beside the river, and charged at him with furious power. And I saw him confronting the ram, and moved with rage against him. He attacked the ram and broke his two horns. But since the ram possessed no power to withstand him, the male goat cast him down to the ground and trampled upon him. And there was no one who could rescue the ram from his hand. Therefore, the male goat grew very great among the goats. But when he had become magnificent, the great horn was broken, and in its place four notable ones came up, facing each of the four winds of the heavens. And out of one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly magnificent toward the south and toward the east, and toward the glory. Yes, its magnificence extended to the hosts of the heavens, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the earth. And trampled upon them. It even magnified itself as high as the prince of the host, from whom it removed the perpetual sacrifice. And it cast down the foundation of his sanctuary, as well as the host. And sin replaced the perpetual sacrifice. And it cast truth down to the earth, so it acted and prospered. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to the one who was speaking, How long will the vision continue concerning the perpetual sacrifice and of the transgression, the desolation, which causes the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot? And he said to him, For two thousand three hundred evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary shall be made righteous.
Then, after I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. And behold, standing before me was one who had the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice from between the banks of the Uli, who called and said, Gabriel, let this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was terrified and fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. Now, as he was speaking with me, I fell into a deep sleep with my face to the ground. But he touched me and raised me to my feet. And he said, Behold, I am making known to you what shall happen during the latter end of the wrath. For at the appointed time, there shall be the end. The two-horned ram which you saw are the kings of Media and Persia. And the hairy male goat is the kingdom of Yavin. And the large horn between its eyes is the first king. And as for the four that stood up in its place after it was broken, Four kingdoms shall arise out of his nation, but without his power. And in the latter end of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, fierce in countenance, and who understands riddles. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power and he shall cause incredible destruction, and he shall prosper and work. And he shall destroy the mighty and the people of the holy ones. And through his cunning, he shall also cause deceit to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by stealth he shall destroy many and he shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without a hand being raised. And the vision of the evenings and the mornings is true as told. But as for you, seal up the vision, for it shall come after many days. And I, Daniel, was weak and sick for some days. Then I arose and went about the king's business. But I was astonished by the vision and was unable to understand it. Chapter 9 It was the first year of Darius the son of Xerxes, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the kingdom of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the books the number of the years specified by the word of Yahweh given to Jeremiah the prophet for the fulfillment of the desolations of Jerusalem. 70 years. Then I set my face toward the Lord God, pleading in prayer and petitions, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed to Yahweh my God, and confessed and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps the merciful covenant with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. 
We have sinned and been perverse. We have acted wickedly and rebelled, departing from your commandments and your judgments. Neither have we obeyed your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, the righteousness is yours, but we are shamefaced, even as it is to this day. The men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those near and those far off in all the lands to which you have scattered them, because of the trespass which they have trespassed against you. O Lord, we are shamefaced. Our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against you. O Lord, our God, the compassions and the forgivenesses are yours, for we have rebelled against you and we have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh our God to walk in your laws which you set before us by the hand of your servants the prophets. And all Israel has transgressed your law, turning aside, refusing to heed your voice. Therefore the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our judges who judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heavens Nothing has ever been done as what has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet we have not appeased Yahweh our God by turning back from our iniquities and by comprehending your truth. O Yahweh, so Yahweh has kept watch over the evil and brought it upon us. For Yahweh, our God, is righteous in all his works which he has done, though we have not heeded his voice. And now, O Lord, our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a strong hand, and made a name for yourself even to this day. We have sinned. We have acted wickedly. O Lord, in keeping with all your righteous deeds, I pray, let your anger and your wrath be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain. For on account of our sins and the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach to all our neighbors. So now, our God, hear the prayer of your servant and his petition. And for your own sake, O Lord, cause your face to shine on your desolate sanctuary. O oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations and the city which bears your name. For we do not present our petitions before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O 
O Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God, because your city and your people bear your name. Now, while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin, along with the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my petition before Yahweh, my God, on behalf of the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, Gabriel, the man whom I had seen in the first vision, flying like a bird, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he gave me understanding and talked with me and said, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. When you began your petitions, the word went out, and I have come to announce it, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore understand the word, and understand the vision. Seventy weeks have been determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to purge iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up vision and profit, and to anoint the Holy of Holies. Therefore, know and understand, from the utterance of the word, to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem, until an anointed one, the Prince. There shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be rebuilt along with the rampart, even in times of distress. And after the sixty-two weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall be nothing. And the people of the Prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and its end shall come with a flood, and until the end there shall be war. Desolations have been determined, and for one week he shall make a prevailing covenant with many, but in the middle of the week he shall abolish sacrifice and offering, and on the wing shall be the desolating abomination, even until the consummation, and what has been determined is poured out on the desolation. Chapter 10 In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the word is true, and the army great. So he understood the word, and had understanding from the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth and I did not anoint myself at all until three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the twenty-fourth day of the first month, I was on the bank of the great river, that is, Hedekel. And I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, there was a man clothed in linen, with a belt around his waist made with pure gold of Uphaz, and his body was like chrysolite, and his face shone like lightning, and his eyes like flaming torches and his arms and feet 
like the gleam of burnished bronze. And the sound of his word was like the sound of a multitude. And I alone saw the vision, I, Daniel. For the men who were with me did not see the vision. But a great terror seized them, so that they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone when I saw this great vision. And no strength remained in me for my vigor within me was turned to frailty, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words, and when I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face in a deep sleep, with my face to the ground. And behold, a hand touched me to set me trembling on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words which I am speaking to you, and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood up, trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come for your sake. But the princes of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for twenty-one days. But behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I left him there with the kingdom of Persia. And I have come to let you understand what will happen to your people in the days to come. For there is still a vision concerning those days. And after he had spoken to me about these things, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And behold, something having the likeness of a man's hand touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and I spoke, saying to the one standing before me, My Lord, because of the vision, I am seized with pangs, and I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. Then the one having the appearance of a man touched me again and strengthened me. And he said, Do not fear, O man greatly beloved. Peace to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened. And I said, Speak, my Lord, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the Prince of Persia. Yes, I am leaving. And behold, the Prince of Yavin will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the document of truth. And no one reinforces me against these, except Michael, your prince. And in the first year of Darius the Mede, 
I took my stand as a reinforcement and a stronghold for him. Chapter 11 And now I shall tell you the truth. Behold, three more kings shall yet arise in Persia, and a fourth shall become far richer than all. And strengthened by his riches, he shall rise up against the entire kingdom of Yavin. Then a mighty king shall arise, and he shall rule with great dominion, and do as he pleases. And after he is arisen, his kingdom shall be broken up and divided toward the four winds of the heavens. But not among his posterity, nor in keeping with his dominion which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be uprooted and belong to others besides them. And a king of the south shall become strong, but one of his princes shall prevail against him and will rule. His dominion shall be a great dominion. And at the end of some years, they shall become allies. Then the daughter of the king of the south shall go to the king of the north to make peace. But she shall not retain the strength of the army, and neither he nor his army shall stand. But she shall be given up, she along with those who brought her in, and her child, and the man who strengthened her in those times. But from a branch of her roots, one shall arise in his stead, and he shall come against the rampart. Yes, he shall enter the stronghold of the king of the north, and work against them, and shall prevail. And he shall even carry their gods, along with their molten images, along with their precious vessels of silver and gold, captive to Egypt. And he shall endure more years than the king of the north. Then the latter shall enter the kingdom of the king of the south, but shall turn back to his own land. However, his sons shall be stirred up and assemble a multitude of great forces. And he shall certainly advance and sweep on and pass through then he shall turn back, and they shall be stirred up against his stronghold. And the king of the south shall be moved with rage, and shall go out and fight with him, with the king of the north, who shall muster a great multitude. But the multitude shall be given into his hand. When he has carried off the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall lay low tens of thousands, but he shall not prevail. For the king of the north will turn back and muster a multitude greater than the first. And at the end of these years, he shall certainly advance with a great force and many resources. Now in those times, Many shall rise up against the king of the south. And sons of the outlaws of your people shall lift themselves up in fulfillment of the vision, but they shall stumble. Then the king of the north shall come and build a siege mound and capture a fortified city. And the armies of the south shall not withstand, not even his picked men, yes, they shall have no strength to withstand. But the man who comes against him shall do as he pleases, and no one shall stand against him. And he shall stand in the land of glory with all of it in his power. Then he shall set his face to penetrate with the strength of his whole kingdom. And he shall bring terms of peace 
which he shall carry out. And in order to destroy him, he shall give him a daughter of men, but she shall not stand with him, nor be for him. Then he shall turn his face to the coastlands, and shall take many. But a leader shall put an end to the reproach he caused. With it removed, he shall turn his own reproach back upon him. Then he shall turn his face toward the strongholds of his own land. But he shall stumble and fall, and be found no more. Then in his stead, there shall arise one who will send a tax collector to the honorable kingdom. But within a few days, he shall be destroyed, but not in anger, nor in battle. Then in his stead, there shall arise a despicable person to whom they will not give the honor of royalty but he shall enter by stealth and seize the kingdom by fraud. And a sweeping army shall be swept away from before him and shall be broken, not sparing even the prince of the covenant. And after allying with him, he shall act cunningly and advancing with only a small nation, he shall rise to power. By stealth he shall enter, even into prosperous provinces, and he shall do what neither his fathers nor his grandfathers have ever done. He shall disperse plunder among them, along with spoil and riches, and he shall devise his plans against the fortifications, but only for a time. Then he shall stir up his power and his heart against the king of the south with a great force. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty force. But he shall not stand, for they shall devise plans against him. Even his table companions shall destroy him. Then his force shall be swept away, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings, with hearts bent on evil, shall sit at the same table and exchange lies, but without success, for the end shall still be at the appointed time. Then he shall turn back toward his land with great riches, but his heart shall be against the Holy Covenant. So he shall take action before returning to his land. At the appointed time, he shall return and advance against the south. But this one shall not be like the first or the last attempt. For ships of Kittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be disheartened and turned back, enraged against the Holy Covenant. Then he shall take action and shall return and single out those who forsake the Holy Covenant. And he shall muster armies and they shall defile the sanctuary the stronghold, and they shall abolish the perpetual sacrifice and set up the desolating abomination. Then by his flatteries he will defile those who act wickedly against the covenant. But the people who know their God shall be strong and take action. And the people's wise men shall instruct many. Yet for many days they shall stumble by sword and by flame, and by exile and by plundering. Now while they are stumbling, they shall be helped with a little help. 
but many shall be joined to them through fraud. And some of the wise shall stumble, so that the rest may be refined and purified and made white until the time of the end, because the appointed time is yet to come. Then the king shall do as he pleases, and exalt himself, and magnify himself above every god. And he shall speak incredible things against the god of gods, but shall prosper only until the wrath has been completed. For what has been determined must be carried out. And he shall have no regard for the gods of his fathers, nor for what women desire. Yes, he shall have no regard for any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in their stead he shall honor a strong god. Yes, a god unknown to his fathers, he shall honor with gold and silver and precious stones and other desirables. So he shall take action against the strongest fortifications with a foreign god. Whoever acknowledges him, he shall provide with honor and shall make them rule over many. And he shall distribute the land as a reward. Then, at the time of the end, a king of the south shall gore him and the king of the north shall storm against him with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and he shall enter the lands and sweep on and pass through, and he shall enter the land of glory, and many shall stumble, but the following shall escape from his hand, Edom and Moab and the prominent sons of Ammon, and he shall stretch out his hand over the lands, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. And he shall have power over the hidden storehouses of gold and silver, and all the desirables of Egypt, and the Libyans and Cushites shall follow in his train. But reports from the east and from the north shall trouble him, Therefore he shall set out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. And he shall pitch the tents of his royal pavilion between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and there shall be no one to help him. Chapter 12 and at that time Michael shall arise, the great prince who stands over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as has never occurred since the first nation until that time. And at that time your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. And the multitude of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to reproach, to everlasting horror. But the wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who lead the multitude to righteousness like the stars to the age and forever. But you, Daniel, hide the words, and seal the book until the time of the end, Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Then I looked, I, Daniel, and behold, there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on that river bank. And he said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the river waters, how long shall it be before these wonders which you have told are fulfilled? 
Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was over the river waters. And he held up his right hand and his left hand to the heavens, and swore by him who lives forever. After a time, times and half a time, and when the scattering of the holy people's power is complete, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. So I said, My Lord, what shall follow these things? And he said, Go, Daniel, for the words are hidden and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall purify themselves, yes, make themselves white, yes, refined. But the wicked shall act wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the perpetual sacrifice is abolished, and the desolating abomination is set up, there are 1,290 days. Blessed is the man who waits and reaches the 1,335 days. But you, go to the end, for you shall rest, and will arise in your lot at the end of the days. Chapter 13 And in Babel there lived a man, and his name was Jehoiakim. And he had married a woman, who was very beautiful, and who feared the Lord. Her name was Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah. And her parents were righteous, and they taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. And Jehoiakim was very rich, and he had a garden near his house, and the Judeans had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. And that year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the master said, Lawlessness has come out of Babel, from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men frequented the house of Jehoiakim, and everyone who had a case to be tried would come to them there. So when the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. And the two elders saw her enter every day for her walk, and they began to desire her, and they perverted their own minds and they would not allow their eyes to look into the heavens, nor did they keep in mind righteous judgments. And both were enamored of her, and they did not tell each other about their trouble, for they were ashamed to reveal their lustful desire to have her. And day by day they watched ambitiously for her, And one day, they said to each other, Let us be off for home. It is time for lunch. So they went out and parted, and both turned back. And when they met again, they asked each other the reason. They admitted their lust, and then they agreed to look for an occasion when they could meet her alone. And one day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with only two maids. And she decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. And no one else was there, 
except the two elders who had hidden themselves and were watching her. And she said to the maids, Bring me oil and soap, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. So they did as she said. Then they shut the garden doors and left by the side gate to fetch what she had ordered. And they were unaware that the elders were hidden inside. So as soon as the maids had left, the two elders got up and hurried to her. And they said, Look, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. And Susanna groaned and said, Oh, I am completely trapped. For if I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your hands. Yet it is better for me to fall into your hands by not doing it than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, ah! and the elders shouted at her, and one of them ran to open the garden doors. But when those in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. But at the accusations by the elders, the slaves felt very much ashamed, for never had any such account been said about Susanna. So on the next day, when the people came to her husband, Jehoiakim, the two lawless elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. And in the presence of the people, they said, Send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Jehoiakim. Now she was sent for, and she came with her parents, and children, and all her relatives. Now Susanna was very delicate, and had a beautiful figure. But those lawless men directed her to be unveiled, for she was veiled, in order that they might feed upon her beauty. But those who were with her, and all the onlookers, were weeping. Now in the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. But through her tears, she looked up into the heavens, for she trusted in the Lord with her heart. Now the elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we, in the corner of the garden, saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized this one and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. And the assembly believed them, since they were elders and judges of the people. And they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O oh, eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. And behold, I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. And the Lord heard her voice. 
and as she was being led away to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I am innocent of this woman's blood. Now all the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? But he stood in their midst, saying, Are you such fools, O sons of Israel, to condemn a daughter of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. And the elders said to him, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of an elder. And Daniel said, Separate these two far from one another, so that I may examine them. Now after they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age! Now your past sins have come to term, passing unjust judgments and condemning the innocent, while freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, The innocent and the righteous you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me, under what tree you saw them having intercourse together? Now he said, Under a mastic tree? But Daniel said, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from God and split you in two. And he put him to one side, and directed the other one to be brought. And he said to him, O seed of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you treated the daughters of Israel, and in their fear would have intercourse with you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you caught them having intercourse together. Now he said, uh, uh, Under uh, evergreen oak. But Daniel said to him, Your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. And the whole meeting cried aloud, and they blessed God who saves those who hope in him. And they rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of testifying falsely. And according to the law of Moses, they inflicted upon them the penalty which they had plotted to impose upon their neighbor. So they killed them. And this was how innocent blood was spared that day. Now Hilkiah and his wife praised God for their daughter Susanna, as did her husband Jehoiakim, and all her relatives, because she was found innocent of any shameful deed. And from that day onward, Daniel was greatly esteemed by the people. Chapter 14 from a prophecy of Habakkuk, son of Yeshua, of the tribe of Levi. There was a certain man, a priest, whose name was Daniel, son of Habel, a companion of the king of Babel. And there was an idol, Bel, which the Babylonians would worship. Now every day they were squandering on it six barrels of fine flour, and four sheep, and six measures of oil. And the king worshipped him, and every day the king went to adore it. But Daniel would only pray to the Lord. And the king said to Daniel, Why do you not adore Bel? And Daniel said to the king, Because I worship no one but the Lord God who made heaven and earth. But the king said to him, Is this one then not a god? 
Do you not see how much is spent for him every day? And Daniel said to him, Not at all. Do not let anyone mislead you, for it is only of clay inside and bronze outside. Moreover, I swear to you by the Lord God of the gods that this one has never eaten anything. And enraged, the king called the leaders of the temple and said to them, Produce the one who eats the things prepared for Bel. But if you cannot, you shall die. Otherwise Daniel shall die, who says they are not being eaten by him. But Daniel said to the king, Let it be so. Unless I prove that Bel is not eating them, I shall die, and all those with me. Now there were seventy priests of Bel, not including their women and children. Now he brought the king into the idol's shrine, and the food was set out in the presence of the king and Daniel, and the mixed wine was brought in and set out before Bel. And Daniel said, You yourself see, O king, that these things are set down. You then seal the bolts of the shrine after it is closed. Now the word pleased the king. But, after everyone departed from the inner sanctum, Daniel directed those who were with him to scatter the whole inner sanctum with ashes, though no one else except him knew. And then, as he sealed the inner sanctum, he commanded that it be sealed with the king's signet and with the signets of certain illustrious priests. And so it happened. And it happened on the next day that they went to the place. But the priests of Bel, after entering through false doors, had eaten everything laid out for Bel and had drunk the wine. And Daniel said, Men, priests, examine your seals, whether they remain. And you also, O king, observe carefully, lest anything be out of order to you. And they found the seal as it was, and they broke the seal. And when they opened the doors, they saw everything which had been set out, consumed, and the tables empty. And the king was thrilled and said to Daniel, Bel is great, and there is no deceit in him. And Daniel laughed exceedingly and said to the king, <laughs> Come, see the deceit of the priest. And Daniel said, O king, these footprints, whose are they? And the king said, Of men and women and children. And enraged, he went to the house where the priests were staying, and they found Bell's food and the wine. And Daniel showed the king the false doors through which the priests would enter and consume what was set out for Bell. And the king brought them out of Belion and handed them over to Daniel. And he gave the provision that was for him to Daniel. But he destroyed Bell. And there was a great dragon in that same place, and the Babylonians worshipped it. And the king said to Daniel, Surely you shall not also say about this one that he is bronze. Look, he lives and eats and drinks. Adore it. And Daniel said, O king, 
Give me permission, and I shall slay the dragon without iron or club. And the king agreed with him, and said, I give permission to you. Then Daniel took thirty minas of pitch, and fat, and hair, and boiled them together, and made a cake. And he threw it into the mouth of the dragon. And after the dragon ate, it burst asunder. And he showed it to the king, saying, Aren't these the things you worshipped, O king? And all of those from the country were very indignant and gathered together against Daniel and said, The king has just now become a Judean. He has destroyed Bel and killed the dragon. And when the king saw that the crowd from the country had united against him, he called his companions and said, I am giving Daniel over for destruction. Now there was a pit in which seven lions would be fed to which the conspirators of the king would be delivered. And every day, two bodies condemned to death would be provided for them. And the crowd threw Daniel into the pit so that he might be devoured and not even have the good fortune of a burial. And Daniel was in the pit six days. And it happened on the sixth day that Habakkuk was having broken bread in a bowl of boiled soup and a jar of mixed wine and was on his way to the reapers in the field. And a messenger of the Lord spoke to Habakkuk saying, This is what the Lord God says to you. Carry the breakfast which you have to Daniel, the one called Belteshazzar, into the den of the lions in Babel. And Habakkuk said, Lord God, I have never seen Babel, and I do not know where the den is. And the messenger of the Lord seized him by the hair of his head, and set him down above the pit which was in Babel. And Habakkuk said to Daniel, Rise! Eat the food that God has sent you. And Daniel said, For the Lord God has remembered me. And Daniel ate. But on that same day, the messenger of the Lord returned Habakkuk to where he had taken him from. Now after these things, the king came out to mourn for Daniel. And when he stooped down into the pit, he saw him seated. And when he had shouted out, the king said, The Lord God is great, and there is no other besides him. And the king brought Daniel out from the pit. But those responsible for his ruin he threw into the pit before Daniel, and they were devoured.